Good morning, YouTube. My name is Ted Pugh. I am from Pugh View Farms. This is my first video. Um, just wanted to give you guys a quick glance of what I am looking at here. This is the barn. These are where the cows come in and out. It's about due for a cleaning. Get some rebatted down. We try to hit it about once a week. Um, got a couple extra stalls for a sick animal or, you know, if something needs a little special care or come calving season, we have uh, four stalls in here and then we box this part off so we can pay special close attention to our calves. This here is the old chicken coop. Um, no longer have chickens. We got rid of them this summer. They were actually more of a pain than anything. They quit laying. And uh, critters were starting to get in there. So we lost a few. And we'll eventually get back into it. I miss the eggs. And uh, this was a boys project a couple years ago. They wanted some rabbits. So I cobbled together a quick rabbit cage for them. But uh, as you can see, we no longer have rabbits. This over here, just kind of where we keep the grain and keep all the miscellaneous stuff that you might need every once in a while. And then that's the ladder going up to the hayloft where we used to store our square bales. Uh, we no longer do that. It's been, I think, four years in the making. Uh, we are round baling now. Much easier, especially for a little hobby operation. It just makes time go by. A lot easier you're not as dedicated these are the girls and there, there's a couple boys in there and a man right there you can see his rump he is a man he is big <clears throat> just fed him some grain I try to feed grain about uh, once a week you know just uh, keep them bucket trained and uh, you know, get some extra minerals and stuff like that. Right there, just a selenium block, white salt block, and a TM salt block. Over here, that's where we uh, do our waters. Both of them have heaters, if need be, which I hear is coming soon. I keep hearing the word polar vortex. I don't like. The only thing I like about that is hopefully the ground out there will freeze so we can start getting rid of some of that because we have an abundance of it but everything's too wet and it ain't worth tearing up the hay fields so just kind of a quick overview I have uh, 12 cows two bulls and uh, two steers and two heifers this year hopefully we can get a good calf out of them uh, they should be old enough and hopefully they are bred feeding time is funny around here they just <laughs> they go nuts over there kind of you can see what we have going on I'm able to feed my round bales outside of the pasture don't have to open any gates don't have to worry about cows sneaking by the skid steer the tractor I can fit five bales in there pretty snug and that lasts about five or six days it depends on, I guess how hungry they are this time it lasted about five days uh, we feed out I don't know I usually feed out one uh, second crop bale a bale of uh, second crop baleage and uh, three dry first crop bales. That's what I like to put in there. And like said, this is just a little paddock area where we keep it for the winter. Um, they get in and out pretty easy, get some fresh air. It's kind of nice to get in there with a the skid steer and just, you know, clean out the bed pack that they make and the other junk that they make. Just kind of a quick glance of the outside of the barn. 
Yeah, I'm sure it probably sounds pretty windy. Because it is. I just got home from uh, my actual job. I work for a municipality, plow snow in the winter, and work on the roads in the summer. Didn't have to plow this morning, but we had to put a little bit of uh, salt sand mix down. The roads were a little slippery when we woke up, so I went in about 5.30. This is my uh, baby, <laughs> to say the least. I would not know what to do if I did not have that. Uh, we purchased that about six years ago. Got a really good deal on it, honestly. I bet you probably what we paid for it, things still worth that, if not more. It's amazing. Skid steers and how demand they are and the price value. They just, they hold their value. So, yeah, that's my baby. Over there, that was our new purchase here a year and a half ago. And that's my second baby. That's got pretty spoiled, especially with the cab now and everything. Uh, that's how we maintain our snow around here when we get the abundance. Up here in western New York, what we're all very well known for up here. Got a nice seven foot snow blower I put on the back of that for the winter. Spreader right there. That was my first farm purchase eight years ago. Actually, before I even had cows, tractor, or anything, I was helping a fellow farmer out, and uh, that was laying out in the weeds. And I asked him, I said, what do you want to do with that? He goes, it is junk. Well, they buckled the floor. They ended up going over a tree stump and basically ruined a bunch of cross members and the floor and stuff. And he says, yeah, give me a couple hundred bucks. And I'm like, well, for a couple hundred bucks, it'd make one hell of a wood wagon. <clears throat> well, we got to looking at it a little more and more, and... It's actually a really good spreader so it was a cheap fix you know we put down some uh, Trex decking which has held substantially great over the last seven years fix across members and like I said nice spreader for a couple hundred bucks kind of out here you're looking uh, this is part of the one side of the road. We got uh, 49 acres over here. <clears throat> I probably got, uh, I'd say, three acres of pasture right here. This is where we first started with just a couple cows. I think we had four cows. And that's all we were going to do. And then I started enjoying it more and more and more. And it started becoming an addiction. And now we're at where we're at. And I don't really plan on climbing too much more for what we got. But yeah, we got a nice hay field down there. There's like uh, 27 acres of woods there. Very good white tailed deer hunting, small game hunting, which I look forward to getting into this year. My boys are getting old enough now where <clears throat> they're starting to gain responsibility and they enjoy being out in the woods. So we're going to give a small game a shot this year. But uh, this here is the view of western New York. We're out here in Sherman, a small town in Chautauqua County. Uh, I've lived here since I was five years old. I moved here from my nearby town. This is actually my dad's homestead where he grew up. They used to raise beef cattle, whiteface. I think he said at one time they might have had 30 or 40. And the woods was all pastured in at that time. They did square bales, did a couple thousand a year. be another time another story I'll get into it more details and kind of show you where the old barn was and where he grew up and kind of where I grew up where my grandparents lived and... And then across the street here is our new purchase there's 27 acres over there beautiful house with a Kwanzaa hut a couple barns 
and uh, look forward to taking you guys over there sometime soon showing you that operation um, basically the way that kind of worked out was is uh, the neighbors moving closer to their son being that they had a new granddaughter and my sister purchased the property and so I guess you can say I kind of got hopefully free reign of it but that's my summer pasture there's like 20 acres over there we got uh, four paddocks and we just do a small rotational graze over there works out really really well but like I said future videos you guys will see I'll give you some in-depth looks over there <laughs> Looks like they're just about getting ready to finish the grain. They're starting to head to the feeder. Oh, there's Zoe. No, not a cow dog. <laughs> I think she wants to be, but far from it. And then, I don't know if you can see way over there, the other one, the little black one. That's Rocky. Those are our lap dogs. Never thought I'd like a lap dog, but... They got a place in my heart. And then here's our homestead. Uh, built in, oh, let's just say it was built 16 years ago. I can't tell you the date. We started on my 21st birthday. Built that, me, my father, and my uncle. So I've been here about 16 years. Like I said, at one time, this was all hayfield. So. Just wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse of what I'm looking at here and uh, kind of what we have going on here. And I look forward to posting another video if I can ever figure out how to post this video. And uh, I guess that's about it. But work in progress, always been a work in progress. Like I said, we've been at this about eight years just a little under and every year it gets better and better you know, real quickly I'll give you guys uh, an idea here the barn driveway I remember just only three years ago coming in the barn driveway we had no gravel we were just right on the top dirt and it was ruts up to your knees if not deeper the cows they didn't have much gravel in there and it, it was just bad <clears throat> I felt ashamed, but uh, like I said, little by little, we got it. So we're getting better and better. Next year, I hope to uh, grade this down again and uh, put like four to five inches of millings and roll it down. So they'll have a nice uh, hard surface area and make it a lot easier for me to clean up in the winter. So, and that being said, Thank you for watching. Um, look forward to posting more videos. And uh, if you like this video, click the like button. Why I'm saying that, I don't know. I just I hear everybody else say it on their own videos. But click the like button, subscribe, share, and look forward to, talk to talking to you guys in a bit.